The AMD Fire Pro W5100 is a pretty interesting card. It is at its core an R7 260, which is by itself is kind of interesting, but it does come with a 75 watt power limit as well as an additional two gigabytes of RAM. So a four gigabyte card and a single slot design that powers just by the PCIe. Does it actually play games? It's starting off with Overwatch at over 100 FPS at 1080p low, and this is a very good experience. And this does give us a lot of headroom so that we can either increase the settings, increase the resolution, or if you have a high refresh monitor, have a much better experience. Not bad for an 8-year-old 75 watt card. Dirt 3 released around the same time as this card, and it plays pretty well at 1080p max quality settings, and we are getting somewhere around the 50 FPS mark on average. And with just a few setting adjustments, we could be above 60 FPS very easily. By moving everything down to the high setting, we are above 80 FPS most of the time and always above 60 FPS, so a very good experience. Rollout is currently in early access, but there is already a lot to play here. At 1080p with the 50% resolution scale, we can play everything at epic settings, which is one below the maximum quality. We're getting about 50 FPS. Let's get ready. Moving down to the high preset puts us above 60 FPS at all times. If you did want to play without the resolution modifier, you can play at a low or a medium quality settings, but then the game doesn't really look good at all. Finish. Timberborn plays pretty well at ultra quality settings at 1080p. We're in the 50 to 55 FPS range most of the time, uh, creeping up to 60 FPS. But if you go down into the high setting, that bumps us up to above 60 FPS without too big of a visual hit. Torchlight on max settings, 1080p, plays pretty much exactly as you'd expect at this point. When there's action on screen, it'll dip down into the 60 to 70 FPS range, but most of the time it's going to be running closer to 100 FPS. Since these games can get pretty hectic at times, it's really good to have some headroom on top. Temtem is in early access, but there's already a lot here to play. At 900p on medium quality settings, which is confusingly one setting below Ultra, we are around the 50 FPS range when going in through the overworld. When moving over into a battle sequence though, that we are above 60 FPS most of the time. Being an older game, Sonic Generations plays as well as you'd expect. 60 FPS, 1080p, max quality settings. There's really nothing to complain about here. Moving over into a newer game like Control, and we are about at the max of what this card can do at 720p internal resolutions on low quality settings, and we're going to be in the 50 to 60 FPS range most of the time. Uh, 60 FPS not in fights, maybe 50 FPS, 45 FPS when we're going into some action. Still a very good experience, especially if you are okay with capping at 30 FPS and maybe turning up a few settings or increasing the resolution. If there's one game you can't play on this card, it's Halo Infinite. Released at the end of 2021, after the last driver for this card is available, and it plays like, well, you know. At 16 FPS most of the time, it's not playable. It's not look good looking. It's pretty, pretty ugly.
but that doesn't mean all new games won't run pretty well. Lost Ark was released in the beginning of 2022, and it runs fairly well on this card on medium quality settings at 1080p, and we're getting around 55, 60 FPS most of the time. Uh, so maybe a little bit below that when action heats up. But if you were looking for a solid 60 FPS experience, you can do that at the low setting. My goodness, are you not hurt? Other than the lack of future driver support, there is not too much to dislike about the W5100. For a low power single slot card, it ticks most of the boxes people are looking for and is compatible with DX12 games. Not bad.